Good afternoon, brethren. This renewal has been very edifying, and I'm anticipating more to come. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Annie Elizabeth Sims. I am the daughter of Brother Ricky and Sister Tasha Sims. I was born in Jensen Beach, Florida on December 28, 1998. At the time, I had one sister, Bailey Sims. I am very thankful for Bailey as an older sister. She is a true blessing. While in Florida, Brother Ricky was the preacher at Jensen Beach Christian Church. It was there where we met Brother Jeremy and Sister Nikki Williams and their two daughters, Sister Logan and Sister Sydney. We also met Brother Jim and Sister Julie Miller and their son, Brother Levi Miller. <clears throat> I am also thankful that the Lord sent us faithful brethren to fellowship with. At this church, my dad was not received by many people. They did not realize that he spoke the truth. And about a three years after I was born, my family and I moved to DeSoto. The Williams soon after us also moved to DeSoto. Some people thought that they were just following us, but they weren't. They were really following God's leading. There in DeSoto, my dad was the preacher at a church. About a year after we moved, my sister Hannah was born. I was so excited to have a new baby sister. While we were there in DeSoto, um, we met some brethren at the church, Brother Herb and Sister Nellie Codwell, and Brother John and Sister Tasha Matthews. I'm also very thankful for these brethren. They were a true blessing in our life that could not be filled by anybody else. At this church, as well as the one in Florida, my dad was not received by many people. People were offended by what he said and did not receive him. They did not realize that he spoke the truth. While we were in DeSoto, we attended the Friday night meetings at the Word of Truth Fellowship. We also attended the Refreshing Waters Renewal. The people I remember at the renewals are the McCulfers, the Powers, brothers Daniel and, Daniel and Paul Blakely, the Knapps, the Bruicks, and Sister Julie and Brother Jim Miller. I remember playing with Sister Eva and Brother Judah every Friday we went. I was so excited to have a new friend that I could play with. So we lived in DeSoto for about three or four years. Then with the Williams, we moved to Joplin. Again, they were not following us. They were following the God's leading. While my parents looked for a house in Joplin, my sisters and I stayed with the Hutchcrafts. Then my sister Rachel was born. Now I not only had one baby sister, but two. Then two years later, I began loving the Lord even more than I had before. I wasn't really sure who or what God was, but I was still very thirsty for the Lord's word. So I began listening to the sermons. And one sermon that um, really did move me was Brother Gibbon was speaking about Jesus and what he did to save us from our sin. This really did move me, move me to be thinking about the old man, the new man, hell, heaven, and then I decided where I wanted to go, and it was not heaven, hell. So on December 31st, 2006, I was baptized. And after I was baptized, Satan began pushing even harder to pull me down. About a year after I was baptized, I began having horrible sleeping problems. I want to be able to sleep. And then Satan... I began seeing him in my room, and I saw something walking down my hallway, and it really scared me. It looked so wicked. So I began praying to the Lord that he would relieve this burden from me. So about four years later, after I asked this, he did. So I soon found out that the Lord works his will at his own time. So... Um, after the Lord relieved this from me, I began having issues with walking in the path. I began disobeying my parents, lying to them, replacing God's word for entertainment. So thank the Lord for faithful parents. They had me read Psalms 51, but for the sake of time, I'll only read the first two verses. It says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, Blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. This really helped me, and I began to get back on the Lord's path. I am still very thankful to the Lord for faithful parents. So I continued to walk on the Lord's path and grow even more. Then, um, a few months later, my mom received a phone call from my granny. She um, lives in Texas. And... Um, she said that my grandfather had had a massive stroke. So immediately, my mom decided that we would go and be with the family and be with my great-grandfather. 
So we got on our way to Amarillo, Texas, and that's where my mom's mom lives. And we got there, and my grandpa was not awake, but he was not dead, and he was just unconscious at the time. And my great granny was crying, and when I saw him, I thought that he'll get better soon. But on February 8, 2010, at 4 a.m., my grandpa passed away and went with the Lord. I was very upset, but I knew that I had to be strong and let my light shine. Matthew 5, 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I wanted to do that, and I wanted to glorify my Father. And later, my great granny said that I was a true blessing unto her at that time. So I'm thankful to the Lord that he gave me the faith and the wisdom to minister unto my family. So my next prayer was that I'd be able to use my talents for the Lord, and he helped me in this area. As a lot of you might know, my mother homeschools us, and um, this is a great blessing unto us because of the times that we're in and because of wicked people that are in this world. So we attend a, a homeschool group in Joplin um, with the Hutchcrafts brethren as well. It's called ACHF, and um, it is a Christian homeschool group, and we do this chapel before class begins. Well, I was the first sixth, gra sixth grader to do chapel time. I spoke about walking in the light, and some of my classmates were amazed that a sixth grader spoke 15 minutes on one verse. The verse was 1 John 1, 7. It says, But if you walk in the light as he is in light, ye have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us of all sin. I chose this verse because this was the verse that a few months earlier helped me realize that I was not walking in the light. At this homeschool group, Brother Robert, Sister Anita, Cobb, and Sister Logan Williams did a class, which I'm very thankful for. And at the end of this semester for this class, Brother Robert requested that each student give a testimony of how they came to know the Lord. Well, I did give a testimony. and. Um, this is the same testimony that I gave there. And many of my classmates were surprised. One of the girls said that she was surprised that I confessed my sins in front of the students and told them how I was. And I told her that, um, that I confessed my sins to show the Lord's works in me. And she asked me what it meant to give talents in the Lord. So I told her that the Lord gave me a talent to draw and that he, that he expected me to give this talent under him, and that this talent did not to use it for the benefit of the world. <coughs> <coughs> so in order to glorify my father, I could use my drawing talents to be a minister unto my brethren, and not to draw worldly things, but to draw godly things. I'm not sure that she understood, but I understood what I was saying. So at this homeschool, so I use, um, I want to give thanks to the Lord that my mother is faithful in putting us in this homeschool group because I have used this homeschool group to glorify the Lord and to show my classmates who I am. And when I say this, I don't mean telling them my favorite color or where I live, asking them to call me, but telling them that I am one of the Lord's children and that I walk in the light and that I am running a race, and that I am pushing for the prize which can only be gained by those who are faithful. So I want to give thanks to the Lord for this homeschool group that we attend. I've been able to let my light shine before the brethren like I wanted to. Then a few months later, on May 22, 2011, and I'm sure you all are familiar with this date, it was a quiet Sunday. Everyone was leaving the morning service to, take, to rest before the evening service. And at 5.17 p.m., I was woken up to, girls, get in the bathroom immediately. Well, I took this as just a little thunderstorm that was just going to pass through, and no damage would happen, because this was not the first time we were sent to the bathroom. So we sat in the bathroom for about 10 minutes. Then my mom and dad came into the bathroom and told us to get our pillows and blankets and immediately get in the bathtub, and that we were in a dangerous situation. My sisters and I sat in the tub while my parents went and got some things to protect us all. When they got back, my dad said that maybe it would be a good idea to go under the house. Well, when we got there, there was already half an inch of water down there. So we went back in the house, and us, my sisters and I got in the bathtub. 
and we sat there for about five minutes. Then our whole house began to shake horribly. It felt like someone was trying to rip the, our house off the foundation. We were all very scared, but we continued to trust in the Lord because he, we knew he was very merciful. One of the verses I thought of during this tornado is Psalms 46, 1 through 2. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will, will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. It really helped me to stay strong and to know that God was my refuge and my strength. Then all the shaking stopped, and then we got hail and rain and all of that. And then um, my parents went out of the bathroom to see, um, to see the damage. We had lost a lot, but two things we did not lose was our hope and our trust in God. I am thankful for something else. I am, I am overly thankful that the Lord put water under our house because our foundation had busted, and so one of us could have been sucked out of under the foundation to the tornado. And then the Lord put the water in there to show us it was not a safe place. So the Lord protected us in many ways during this tornado. So my parents decided it would be best if we went to my grandparents' house since the tornado had not gone their way. So we got ready to go over there, and on the way there, my dad received a phone call from the man he worked with. And my dad got off the phone, and this man that he worked with said that the tornado had gone down the Lillian Street, and everything was completely gone. And that my dad began crying and told us this, and I was very scared that we had lost the Williams Brethren. As you all may know by now, we are very close to the Williams Brethren. So we continued on our way, thinking that the Williams were gone, and that we may not be able to see them again knowing that they were in heaven. So we continued, and then my mother received a phone call from Sister Barbara Hutchcraft. Sister Barb said that everything on the Williams Street was gone, but that Aaron was on his way to go pick up the Williams. So I was very glad to hear that all the Williams were okay, and that only a couple of them suffered a minor injury. So we got to our grandparents' house, and... Um, so we stayed, we've been living there for a little while since we can't, our house is not safe. So about a week after all this happened, we began praying that insurance would have favor on those who were hindered by this tornado. And that the Williams would be able to find a rental car and a rental house, or a car to keep in a rental house. So about a couple days later, we found out that the Williams had found a car, and not just any car, but an eight-seated car that they could all have in that it was, they had had a good deal on it. And then a few days after that, we had found out that the Williams found a rental house. But not just the rental house, but a man, the man who owned the rental house was a believer. And that the Williams brother had great fellowship with this man. So I was very thankful that they were able to find a car. And then the insurance man that helped my family and I, um, he was also a believer. And, um... My mom has um, her, when um, she was talking to him, he had told her that he liked her answering machine that she had on her cell phone. The answering um, machines had a scripture in it, and um, my mother was telling the person who called them to have a blessed day, and, to, and she said the scripture, and this man had complimented on mother, my mom's machine, answering machine. So I was very thankful that the Lord did answer our prayers, and he did the insurance did have favor on us, and not just that, but the man who rented the Williams house was a Christian, and the man who helped us was also a Christian. So um, now I, my prayer is, is that I will be able to continue to grow in my faith, and that I will continue to be able to glorify my Father. And now I know the Lord works in amazing ways. I will leave you all with one final verse. It says, Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. 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 I'm going to read a scripture before we do it. It says, He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know is whereas I am blind, now I see.
Now.